Hello there. My name is Nate Jackson, the Eclipser. Let's get this crap over with. Um, this is my review of series nine, Eclipse Series 19, Chantal Ackerman in the 70s. Um, our last review of the year. Ugh, and I hate that we're ending on such a sour note. I mean, this is right up there with the William Klein set. I mean, the William Klein movies at least have some kind of plot to them. There's, don't get me wrong, they're still terrible. Who Are You Polly Magoo is still god-awful. The Model Couple and all those they're, they're stupid, terrible movies. But, and this is a really bitty, small, flat, no ass having butt. There's a semblance of a plot to them. Something is happening. The problem with Chantelle Ackerman's films is that she can't decide whether or not she wants things to happen in her movies. And um, that's problematic. It's extremely terrible. Yeah. Most of the movies, nothing happens, and so it's just it's pointless, you know. But the problem is she's expecting something to happen in these movies. So, what do you do? You know, what can you say? There are good movies out there where there is little to no plot, or the plot is so crazy or out there that even though it's confusing and at times you know very head scratching, it's still an enjoyable watch for small segments of it. These particular movies are just long shots of people doing stupid things for no apparent reason whatsoever. I called it. Well, not everything is in here is absolutely terrible, but the but the the cons outweigh the pros in this one. So let's go, let's go and get started. Um, the first disc has three films she made in New York. Apparently, it's called the New York Films. Um, the first one is called La Chambre. Uh, it's from 1972, it runs 11 minutes, it's kind of color, silent, 1.33, 1 aspect ratio. And there's not much to say, it's just a a, re, a shot of a revolving camera looking around a room and Chantal Ackerman's in a bed and that's it. Dumb. F. Um, the second one is called Hotel Ackerman, um, Hotel Monterey. It's from 1972, 62 minutes, color, silent, 1.33, 1 aspect ratio. This one's probably the most, probably the best of them, because it's simply just shots of a hotel. There's no dialogue, there's no plot, it's just her taking long shots of a hotel. It can be very, very, it's very, very boring, partly because of the silent film, the silence of it. I think that's the problem with this movie, is that because it's silent, it's very claustrophobic and it doesn't... It doesn't sit well with a viewer, so yeah. it's nothing nothing crazy annoying. Um, the people in the hotel are interesting to look at, and I think also the I think the long shots are sometimes interesting, but sometimes I also had to check because I wasn't sure if. Uh, the DVD froze or something. I had to look and look and see for the little little blurry dots and all that, you know. But um, yeah, I think also because of the claustrophobic nature of it, it, it does get a little tight, you know. Um, so all I can give this is a, a C minus. It's still still not a great movie, but it's not the worst I've seen. Definitely not the worst in this set. Probably the, the best of them all. The next one that goes right back down to Ground Zero called it's called News from Home. It's it was done in 1976. It runs 86 minutes. Color monaural in French with English subtitles with an alternate English soundtrack. 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. This is just long shots of New York with Chantal Ackerman reading letters from her mother to her while she was. In living in the states, yeah, it's her and her mother. You know, apparently gets very 
worried that because Ackerman isn't writing her back, and yeah, that's all you can say about this. It's it's dumb. It's boring. It's I give it a D minus. Uh, so the next one, next one. So the next disc has probably the worst of them all. This is this is a pointless movie. Je tui je tu il est. Il est. It's from 1975. It runs 86 minutes. It's black and white. It's monaural and French with English subtitles. 1.33 to 1 aspect ratio. Oh, God. Basically, this is just an hour and a half of a woman played by Chantal Ackerman herself laying around naked in her apartment, moving her furniture around, eating sugar, spilling the sugar, and not getting ants. Taking her clothes off and start looking out the window, but hiding herself when people walk by, and then going out with the truck driver, eating with him at a at a diner, and then giving him a hand job in his truck, letting him talk for almost a half hour, and then meeting up with a woman who she has dinner with and has a sex scene with, and that's it. The sex scene goes on for ten minutes. Oh god, it's it's just, you know. And I guess Ackerman didn't care because and I didn't know this until I looked it up, but Ackerman was a lesbian. So those kind of scenes I guess came natural to her. But still, this is a movie where it's just it's pointless. Absolutely pointless. It's just I've I mean it's right up there with Who Are You Polly Magoo? But it's the opposite. It's the other side of the Polly Magoo coin. Where Polly Magoo has too much shit happening. Je tu il elle has no shit happening. If you can surmise that. So, yeah. This gets, this gets enough for me. It sucks. The final movie in this set. Uh, Le Rendezvous d'Anna. 1978, 126 minutes, color, manol, and French with English subtitles, 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio. This one comes so close to not being crap. So close. But it's crap. So um, This movie is basically... It's about a woman named Anna who is this filmmaker and she's going to these different cities to attend screenings of her latest film. And she checks into the hotels and just lays around and she meets up with these people. She meets up with former lovers and current lovers and the men in the movie talk a lot, I've noticed. I mean, even the, even the women, the women do too, but, I mean, everyone talks more than Anna does. But it seems like the men get really, really long monologues. Um, Heinrich has a really long monologue. Hans, Daniel, they all have these long-winded speeches where they talk about nothing. And it's, it's, I don't know if that was pointed or not, because apparently... This movie didn't do very well because Ackerman was accused of selling out after the success of Gene Dealman, which is another crappy movie. Uh, but yeah, this movie almost has a plot, but there's just so much you know, meandering around that where it just fails to really excite. There's too many long shots of trains, too many silent shots of her just laying in bed and and the last scene is just, you know, ten minutes of her checking her voicemails, which she apparently, you know, never answers the phone. And, you know, after she's had sex with, uh, I don't know, who, I don't remember the guy's name, but this guy who gets sick to his stomach. Yeah, so it's, it's a pretty pointless movie, you yeah. know. And, and even, but uh, Eclipse says, you know, we come to see her emotional and physical detachment from the world. Don't, don't try to read shit in these movies, Eclipse. Don't try to make these movies more than they are, you know? Because they're nothing, you know? But, whatever. That's their point, you know? And at least I don't have to sit through all those damn supplements like Criterion 8 does, so... Whatever. Anyway. Le Rendezvous de Anna. Um, F+. Almost not crap, but... 
So overall, this set sucks. Don't buy it. Don't watch it. Don't even think about it, you know. But, you know, and it's given me proof enough to know that Chantal Ackerman sucks. And she made terrible movies in her lifetime. And she died, I think, a couple of years ago. And I know that she made more mainstreamish movies, but I highly doubt those are much better. But, you know, maybe someday down the road, Criterion will put them out, but probably not, but because they're too new. So, anyway, so that's all I got for you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's it. So, uh, that's the last set we'll do this season. And uh, I know Criterion 8's got some kind of announcement coming up soon about the future of this channel, so stay tuned for that. But uh, for me, I just want to say thank you all for watching. Um, it's been a pleasure reviewing most of these movies. Uh, we saw a lot of good ones this season. We saw a lot of fantastic ones. Uh, I know Criterion 8's been at the Barnes & Noble sale. He picked me up the... Uh, the Raymond Bernard set and the Samuel Fuller set, so those are awesome. It's awesome and nice of him. And uh, told him to go pick up the Hiroshi Shimizu set, so hopefully he'll be getting that one soon. And yeah, so a lot of good movies. I think, yeah, probably my favorite that we've seen this season. I think, I, I can't remember where we started though, that's the thing. I can't remember where we began and when we ended. Um, but we saw mostly all good films, well, mostly all really good films. I really enjoyed the you know, the Samuel Fuller and the Raymond Bernard set, and uh, the Hiroshi Shimizu set was really good. Uh, there were also you know, some other good ones. I'm blanking. It's so weird, but oh, well. uh, not not too many sour notes, you know. The William Klein sour, uh, the Aka the Aki Karismaki, uh the Proletariat Trilogy, that was really good, too. Um, that was That's one that may be on the radar is to pick that one up because it was definitely very different, you know. So, yeah, that's all I've got for you today. That's all i got for you for the rest of the year. So, anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I'll be back sometime next season, somebody next year, probably for, uh, I think the next one is the uh, George Bernard Shaw on film set. That, that one's, I think, number, yeah, number 20, so we'll get to that one sometime next season, unless there may be a chance that I may do it before the end of the year as just kind of a side project. The cr Criterion 8 may let me back in the studio just just for fun, just to knock these out, you know, get a little caught up, because e these are easy to do compared to his movies where he's got to watch all the supplements and talk about those and all that. You know, for me, I just got movies, you know. It's, it's easy peasy, you know. So anyway, uh, thank you again. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you all down the road. Keep watching those Eclipse movies. Goodbye.